All week, we've brought you stories on the deadly 2013 tornado outbreak Central Illinois saw, and today marks the fifth anniversary of that fateful day here in the area. But why were those storms so strong? Here's the science behind the outbreak as part of this week's series, Central Illinois Strong, five years later. This is a particularly dangerous situation. There was no question that we were going to have tornadic storms that day. Damage to homes, businesses, and vehicles is likely, and complete destruction possible. That's the message that was heard five years ago as a violent storm was inching closer to Washington, Illinois. Right, I gotta go. Although it was part of a devastating and deadly outbreak, it did not take forecasters by surprise. National Weather Service meteorologist Chris Miller has been forecasting in central Illinois for three decades. Three or four days out, we are confident that this is going to occur with a major storm like that. Uh, it's something that we don't see too often. Meteorologists refer to that day as a textbook case when it comes to tornadic activity. It was November, but it felt like spring. This particular day was going to be a serious, severe weather outbreak. It's explosive. All the ingredients were not only available, but they were off the charts. Here's the damage that would come that day in central Illinois, but why so destructive? Well, we had an unseasonably warm, moist environment, which leads to rising air and support for strong thunderstorms. We also had a strong cold front moving in, and with the jet stream on top of all that, we had what we call strong wind shear. That is changing wind direction and wind speed with height through the atmosphere. Now, the Storm Prediction Center, who monitors and tracks severe weather, had Central Illinois under a high risk of severe activity. That's almost unheard of. And even scarier, the probability of having a tornado was at 30%. A high probability of tornadoes called for a special type of tornado watch. What we call a PDS watch, which is a particularly dangerous situation. They may only issue a handful of those in one year. This is not just a you know, tornado watch. We're going to have a few tornadoes here and there. This was a massive outbreak. We didn't have time to uh, second guess ourselves. That's meteorologist Matt Barnes, who actually issued tornado warnings that day. Pekin was one of the first spots hit. Luckily, they had five minutes warning. We were in warning mode. It was one of those times when you just walk in the door and things start up right Im immediately. The next tornado in the area struck in East Peoria. That would grow into the violent Washington tornado. Washington, thankfully, had more than 15 minutes warning. A storm that began to exhibit uh, any type of rotation, I put the warning out right away due to the environment that we were in. And all tornadoes are dangerous, but this was out of the norm because they were moving so quickly. Once we got verification that the tornadoes were on the ground and they were moving along. Then we started updating our messaging. You are in a life-threatening situation. At 11.03 a.m., a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado was located near Washington. This was big and it was bad and it was moving through Washington causing considerable damage. Miller used to live in Washington, so what he saw on radar hit close to home. I can tell you when I saw that come in on the radar, I felt like my heart just sank. The first thing that entered my mind was, I certainly, I hope everybody's in their basements. Now the tornado was so powerful, there was actually debris clearly visible on radar, even up near 30,000 feet in the atmosphere. Typically the wind going out from the radar with a tornado will be about 40 miles per hour or so. Just before it went into Washington, we saw a rapid increase of wind at about 120 miles per hour. It ended up being a long track tornado claiming three lives. The tornado injured 125 and left a billion dollars in damage, serving as a reminder. There is really no tornado season in Illinois. We have a peak in April, May, and June. Our season runs from January to December. We've got to get rid of these myths. It doesn't matter what's in their path, whether it's a city, a river, they're just going to keep going. And that's why meteorologists continue to study what happened that day with the goal of keeping our communities safe when disaster strikes. Tonight at 10, we hear more from those who forecasted the event and from those who survived in a special remembrance to that destructive day. And